Okay, so um, this is our, uh, our second um, marketing sandwich course, and today I actually prepared properly. So today's sandwich is uh, a chicken and avocado from Pret a Manger. Very nice. Looking forward to that. After, looking forward to that afterwards. Yeah, I've not got one, so oh, I'll no share worries. it. So, could you just introduce yourself, Martin? Tell us a little bit about you. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Richie. I'm Martin, and I own uh, my business. is called uh, Your Big Pick. I created a product for employee engagement, Big Picture, and uh, we help people development and business development professionals uh, let their people tell their own stories. Find out more at Your Big Pick. Cool. Right. So today's subject is going to be about SEO and how to get your site kind of ready for for the new millennium, I guess, or I don't have to be new millennium, just get it ready, really. Um, so I'm just going to share screen. So when I flick over, Martin, just let me just let me make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, there we go. Okay, Martin. So can you see Google now? I can. Fab. That's good. So. One of the first things um, to think about when you're creating copy to do um, when you're kind of search optimizing your website is thinking about search intent first. So what will your prospective clients stroke users want to actually, what will they actually search for rather than what you think they might have come up with or a brilliant title you've got um, because you might come up with an amazing title of something but if nobody ever searches it and it never matches at somebody's search, that title is kind of lost. Um, and it's also about ensuring that um, the search term that you're trying to rank for is accurate enough and not too broad. A really great example is jewellery. So let's say you're a jeweller and you think, right, I want to rank for number one for jewellery. Well, actually, it's a bit pointless because let's just put in jewellery. First of all, by putting in jewellery, it's really, really broad. So you've already got lots of people advertising just for the um, just for jewelry terms. So these ones here, if you're not aware, the ones that says ad, it's obviously an ad, and that kind of tends to ticks up the top element. You then got local searches. So this is coming up for jewelry in in Leeds, which is obviously where I'm sat. And then you see the next people who are um, ranking for jewelry are H. Samuel, Ernest Jones, Beaver Brooks, Trotsky, Goldsmiths, Tiffany. Not on the high street, accessorized, selfridges, uh, QVC, bizarrely. Um, now, if you're if you're a local jeweler, the place where you want to arrive is on this map. So, if I'm looking for a jeweler and it shows me people that are in Leeds, I can walk out of Victoria. Uh, Victoria Leeds is I can literally see it from where I'm sat. So that works quite well. So the local element works really well. But if you're trying to rank nationally for jewelry, you've got really stiff competition from people who have been around a long time have got um huge marketing departments have got huge marketing budgets they're well known on the high street um they're well known names you're going to really really struggle so one of the better ideas is to try and niche down a little bit so a, a good example i always use is if you're a, a jeweler who specializes in um silver jewelry so that's first of all we're kind of we're going down another level so we're going for i'm going to move that around a bit so silver jewelry um and let's say that you specialize in things that are like skull and bones and and things like that kind of things that goths might wear so silver jewelry for goths let's see what we get on silver jewelry for goths already you've got here so this is now changed from all the kind of the high street ones to um things that are a bit more accurate for what these people want so alternative unusual sterling silver jewelry um gorgeous gothic jewelry um witchy boho gothic jewelry now if you're a goth and you're looking for jewelry and you want particularly silver jewelry you're not going to go to ernest jones because they're not going to have these kinds of unique things that, that suit your lifestyle so what you're looking for mm -hmm. so rather than trying to rank your site which is i'm going to stick with silver jewelry for goths um, just for the word jewelry you're kind of wasting your time um because you're going to get really frustrated and you're going to start shy a lot of, a lot of hard work and get really disheartened as to why you can't rank for the word jewelry the reason is is because everyone else is already in front of you and by going for what's called the long tail so if you imagine um 
imagine a graph where um, the kind of the term jewelry is, is has got lots of searches and it's right at the peak of the graph. But as you have more and more words, there are less and less searches for those for those precise phrases. So um, the searches become less. However, the accuracy of those searches become become increased. So as somebody gets down to um, silver jewelry for goths, they are somebody who is looking for silver jewelry because they've either got they're either buying it as a present for somebody who they know is a goth, or they are themselves a goth. In which case. Um, the website that they're on, when they're on your website, your website, they are much more likely to make an inquiry or buy. So it's really important to think about the kind of terms that you'll want to be searched for and found for. That's the kind of really key starting point because if you put in some obscure term that you go, I want to be found for, I don't know, pret a manger sandwiches on a bench in Leeds, I don't know, something really, really random then it's not even in the ballpark. So something you need to be found for it, but you don't want to make it too broad that everyone finds it. Does that make sense, Martin? Yeah, it does, yeah. So I'm seeing like a bit of a hierarchy of terms where you start at the top and then go down. I suppose yeah, yeah. you've got to sell the stuff for the words to work. So they've got to both be more specialist, but also fairly reflect what you actually sell. Yes, because otherwise, no, so they've got to work on both fronts. I suppose it's a bit of a compromise of both. Yeah, absolutely. Because you don't, you don't want to miss, you don't want to misleading. You want to, um, your search engine uh, result needs to be complete enough so that it pulls somebody through, so it, it gets their interest, and then when they land, mm. they're not disappointed by where they land and what they've seen, because that's when um, people use the term called bounce. So people see a search result click on it, go to the web page and then go, actually, no, this is not what I wanted. Mm. So it's making sure that your your landing page matches really, really well the term that you want to land for. Otherwise, you get that bounce and that waste. And that happen, that can happen a lot. Yeah. And how, um, given there's a quite a bit of investment to come up with the right terms mm -hmm. and then implement them, how quickly can you then turn around changes to that because you don't want to be doing it every day but you probably don't want to be waiting a year or two so oh, no. there must be like a bit of a, what's the sweet spot in terms of putting something out there learning from it and then going back with everything else business owners have got to do so um for, for searching and optimization it would typically take for a for a, a new page for a completely new term um, you need to give it, a, 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 it, it does encompass the, the, the site and everything else that goes on with that, the structure, and we'll come on to that in a bit. But typically, a lead time for getting good SEO and getting it to start working is roughly three months. And that's because Google has to come and look at your page and compare it with all the other pages that it, that it thinks is the best match. And um, because there are billions and billions of pages, I start to sound like Brian Cox now, but there are billions and billions of pages on the, on the internet that mm. Google has to do this amazing indexing job where it looks for uh, relevancy, accuracy, um, recency, and a, a whole, I mean, they've got hundreds and hundreds of um, tiny metrics that they measure, and they, they're, they're updating and changing their algorithms and their measurements daily, if not hourly, in some cases. Um, so you can never really know what the full, nobody really knows what the full suite of tools is that they benchmark a page on to, to tell you whether that will, how high or low that will rank. So mm. SEO is a, is a long game. It's not a quick, it's never a quick fix. If anyone ever tells you that they can get you um, onto page one of Google um, like next week, it is possible. But the only way to do it is to um, get you ranking for some weird term like a, I don't know, mix of letters or something really odd. Um, because there is, for every single term that you want to rank for, there are thousands and thousands of other pages that are already being ranked for that. So effectively, it's an arms race. Your page has to be so much better than the, than the top competitor. Mm. And, and that's, that's really how it, that's, that's kind of, that's the, the basics of it. Um, if I'm just going to go and share that page again. So the, the elements that kind of pull you in, as you can see in here, so we've got the, the, the search term up at the top, silver jewellery for goths is in there. 
um, you can see that the, the top this top this top result is for Google Shopping, which is again another thing that is, is kind of on my, uh, this is more a, this is this is a, these are sponsored paid advertising. So this this top section is is uh, is a paid thing that runs through AdWords. But interestingly, on the silver jewelry for Goss, there are no kind of standard ads coming up. So there are no kind of normal AdWords keywords coming up. So this is quite interesting. So what we're looking at here, we've got silver jewelry for Goss is a term. Their page title is alternative unusual sterling silver jewelry. So we've got the words silver in there, mm. we've got jewelry in there, and I'm thinking that the, the algorithm is for looking at goths and, and, and looking at things it's shown before and trying to kind of match in that kind of way. So it's saying the alternative and goth is kind of a, a similar kind of synonym. It looks at the same kind of thing. So this looks like the page we should show. Also in their description, which is, and this is the bit that's on their website, but you can't, but when we go to their website, you won't be able to see it. You can see that Google has bolded some of these words. So jewelry is coming up. Mm. Silver jewelry is bolded there. Uh, not quite sure it's, what it's brought necklace, but maybe that's because it's a synonym for jewelry. Mm. Also, the, interestingly, they put in different spellings of jewelry there. Yeah, as well. I noticed that. Yeah. Um, and the word gothic, and you can see, although mine says goths, gothic is obviously a synonym of goths, um, and so Google's bolded that. So you can see how Google is really intelligent on how it's doing that. Mm. Um, you can see in the next one down there, you've got silver, which is, this is an eBay one, silver gothic jewellery for sale. Um, and that's there in, there, in the description is silver gothic jewellery. So that matches that quite mm. closely. So you can see how just these, just these small elements are already going, are already coming back as indicators to Google that this is the right page. Mm. Um, a really good way of um, finding these kind of different terms that, that that will fall out is to use actually google itself so that's a really good term so let's for example say that jewelry is not your um the goth jewelry is not what you want to so we'll put in jewelry and then if we click on the side there it, it then look it then starts to show you um other terms that people are searching for for jewelry so we've got jewelry sale jewelry shops jewelry hut high street jewelry shops and that might be a good one for local ones Jewelry box, jewelry brands, jewelry shops near me, or jewelry or, or jewelry. That's a bit confusing. Different um, you can already see that if you were a company that specialised in jewelry boxes, you probably want something along those kind of terms. So jewelry box. And again, you can see that not on the high street has got jewelry boxes there, and it comes up in the description. Um, and again, going down this rabbit hole from jewelry box you then start to look at, okay, so there are different ones. So if you're selling personalized jewelry boxes, you want to rank for that term instead, mm. um, or vintage jewelry boxes or large jewelry boxes. All these terms start to get you, start to get your user further down the line. And the closer they get to the line, the, the closer they match, that's the kind of the sweet spot. And that's what Seth Gowen, really, I'm sure you've talked about, um, and, and other mm. people like that call the long tail. Mm. And it's a long tail of search. So all the volume is up at the is up at jewelry. The massive amount of volume will not be at vintage jewelry box. But somebody's looking for a vintage jewelry box. They don't want a brand new one from Debenhams. They want to go. They want a vintage one. And again, the vintage one you can probably go a bit further than that. So we look at vintage jewelry box. Okay. So somebody wants a vintage one with a ballerina. Somebody wants a 1930s one, an antique one with a ballerina, one from India. Mm. Um, a presentation box or an antique glass one so you can see how all these extra terms if you're looking for a specific one you want your page to match all those and how quick when do you how do you know it's happening how do you know it's working or how do you know how well it's working and how quickly does that happen um sometimes um so google um likes new stuff so what can happen is when you put a new page up um, and because I, I use a tool to check and I'll show you that in a minute. You put a new page up and it suddenly leaps up the up the rankings. So you go from having nothing on this page at all, you put a new page up and you might suddenly appear in the top 10 for rankings, maybe in the first one or two weeks because Google goes, oh, it's new content, we'll show new content. And then as the algorithm works its way through, as Google's bots look at all that content, all your competitors and all the new pages who've just appeared, it will start to kind of, 
um, not necessarily knock it down. If it's a really wrong page, it might not, might not be knocked down. But they'll tra they'll start to um, realign that and reshuffle the results so that they, so that they so that they in their mind they're more accurate. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Yeah, interesting. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you an example of um, one of my pages. So this is a page that's on this is a, this is a blog that I wrote and it's specifically on social media for event planners. So if somebody's an event planner and they want to see how well social media will help, this is a likely term that they would that they would put in. Um, it's got it's got it's got this this in the title social media for event planners. It's very straightforward. It, it, there's no kind of guessing around what the subject is. We've got a nice relevant image. Um, it starts to tell a little bit of a story about my time when I ran Better Culture, um, and about kind of how I how I used social media marketing to drive the event. Um, it's a nice video. Well, you can watch that at your own leisure. You might think it's nice or not. Um, it's me talking, and then we go into really straightforward text about how can social media work for your events. And can you see that in the in the subheads I'm using social media and events in the subheads. Yeah. In the content, it's mentioning social media, um, and it will be mentioned in events. There we go. It's got event mentioned in there, um, event mentioned in there, and on and on throughout throughout the post. But it's built in a way that it is not um, it's not spammy. So it does say events and it does say social media throughout the post. But I'm not kind of shoving in or cramming lots of words in. Google doesn't like that at all. So if you if you try to cram the words in. Um, it's really not going to help. Mm. Um, you can also see that it, without reading it all, it's, it's quite a lengthy post, and it's formatted in such a way um, that we've got that we've got a heading, we've got text, and then we've got subheads. So just like a newspaper, so it helps the reader scan through. That's why that's why newspapers do that. Yeah. And really, get, why, did, the page. why did you arrive at the specific? uh focused on event planners what was your rationale where did that derive from um this came from a discussion i had with a client who is an event planner and she wanted to work out how social media could help for her event planning um so it came off, off the back of a conversation with a client if a client's asking for for that kind of thing then that's kind of a search they've just made a verbal query rather than searching on the internet so again, think about these conversations you have or long emails that come in where you have to put mm. a long, where, where a client asks a question and you have to write up a long answer. That could potentially be a good blog post. That's I use that a lot. Um, yeah. So sometimes emails will, will trigger off a blog post. So um, you can see that there's a certain amount of content in it and it's formatted in a certain way. So I'm just going to nip on to, into the back end of that post and you'll be able to see it a little bit more. So this is um, a standard WordPress install. Um, for the blog, so there's no kind of extra elements in here. This is just a standard WordPress blog, and how that how that will work. So you can see that in here, I've got the this is the title, social media for event plans. You saw on the other page, WordPress yeah. automatically marks this up as, as what's called a H1, so a heading one, um, and all that does, all that is, is it's Google saying um, this is the title of this page. So the website, sorry, saying this is the title of that page. And Google kind of looks at that and says, ah, this is a title because it's marked in H1. If you're using WordPress, you don't have to worry about marking it as H1 because your title of a blog post automatically drops into a H1. It does that for you. The next element you can see down there, I don't know whether you can see this, Martin, is, is here. Is the, this is the, yeah. the website address. And you can see in the website address, it says social media for event planners. So it, it matches that precisely. Now, having the URL match the title is really good because that, again, so this is the heading. This is almost like the indexy bit, the URL. So if those mm. match really well, then that helps strengthen the website. It helps strengthen the page. Um, as I move down the page, you can see that there are, there are different links in here. So the, the blue is a link there. So again, I've, I've linked to Better Culture and I've linked to um, Social Media Marketing. Now, the reason I've done that is that Google likes, um, like a good A-level paper, I guess, um, likes references, it likes external references. So it likes you to kind of link out to somewhere else that you're referencing, not, not any old site, but one that's relevant. So in this case, yeah. I'm linking, this, this Better Culture link is linking out. So it's going to the Better Culture site, 
um, there we go, betterculture.com. And oh, really, really importantly, is it's oh, it's marked to open in a new tab. So if you come onto my website and you click that link, you don't lose my page. Better culture opens in a new tab. That's really, right. really key because you, otherwise, you, you go on. Sorry. Is that the default option, or do you have to turn that on? Um, you would have to turn that on. Yeah, you have to turn that on. So any external right. links want to open in a new tab all every time because that means that your website stays open, their website opens, but yours stays open too. Yeah. Um, the second link on there is social media marketing, which is going to my site, which is going internally. So Google again likes you to do internal links to relevant pages using relevant terms. So that one, as I showed you before, if I click on that, that's not marked as open in a new tab. And the link matches the link text as well. So that again, Google still likes links and it likes to show it as um, a text link that is the text matches where it's going to. That again makes it really strong. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving down, we've got a video which doesn't really help for SEO but helps the user because they'll sit and they, they might they spend more time watching that potentially. We've got um, the social media. How can social media work for you? Again, we've got this term in here social media and events. This is marked as a H2. I don't know if you can see here. This is marked as H2. This is something you have to do manually. So this says it's a subhead, and it means that this subhead relates back to the main heading of the title, the main, head, main heading of this blog post. So it's almost like a bit more information. And at this point, I can use synonyms and, dip, and word it slightly differently to the heading. Mm. Um, again, we've got more text in here using things like a bullet-pointed list, which just helps the reader get through things. Um, more bullet-pointed lists, so pre-event what you should do, what I would suggest. You can see another link here, a way to Medium. Um, that's another external link. More lists of what you should do, the process, and then a kind of call to action at the end. Events are great with generate social media content. A little bit talking about that. And then here we've got a call to action, which says, if I can help you, please call me on this or mm. fill in this form. Now, this, this form you'll see on the website when I jump across to there. So that's just a little bit of code that shows the website. In addition to that, We've got this, um, the image that appears at the top of the blog post there is actually putting this featured image here. Um, now, if I click on that, it will show you the image and you can see that the title in there is social media for events and the alt text is social media for events. Again, that's important because Google can't see, um, Google can't see what the image is so by naming the by na having an image that's got the same alt text that just means alternative text for this for this image yeah. in the page it helps the search engine optimization mm. like it okay. cool okay um now going down on the on all the websites that we build uh, we put in this tool which is called seo yoast seo which basically looks back up at your page and then tells you what needs amending or doesn't need amending so you put in your key phrase, so social media for events. This is what I've put in. And then um, it helps you, you can see here, so it's helping me craft my page title. So social media for event planners is in there. And we talked about the description in here where it's where it's bolding um, the right, correct terms for this dual research. In here, you can see it's bolding on my description there. It's bolding social media events, social media and events again. Mm. I can change that snippet by just clicking on edit and I can put whatever I need to put in here. So you can change that, and as you do that, it will update your SEO analysis using, using the tool that's already built in. Um, when you click on the drop down on the SEO analysis, it starts to kind of give you your scores, and we'll look at some of the things that we've talked about. So the key phrase in the introduction, again, these things are, are brilliant if you can get these all absolutely perfect. But sometimes you kind of have to make a bit of a judgment call because at the end of the day, um, a human is still going to read these pages. So for me to fix in the key phrase in the introduction exactly how I want it, exactly how it is um, social media for events there, might look a bit weird. So in some circumstances, I'll break the rules a little bit. But for other elements, you can see I've got outbound links, internal links. The key phrase length is good. The key phrase density, so it's found six times in the in the blog post above. Mm -hmm. um, the keyword, the keywords or synonym appear in the meta description, which is which is this element here. That's the meta description. 
Um, its key phrase is in a subhead, so the H2 we talked about. Um, I've not used this key, this key phrase before, so there's not another page on my website competing for it. Um, I've got the key phrase in the alt tag, as it says there. I've got plenty of text, so 746, 764 words is good. It's in the title. The title width is good, and the key phrase is in the slug, so the slug is um, this element here. Yeah. So the slug's kind of in, the slug's there. You got that there. So what that's then telling me is from, a, from this, from the um, Yoast side, it gives me a nice green tick there, so SEO is good. It also does flag up readability. Now, readability is a bit weird because that is using the, and I forget the name of the test, but there's a test that says that it's readability it marks really good if it's readable for like a reading age of an eight year old. So if you've got something that's quite technical, you can kind of ignore that, li that bit a little because, it, because it's kind of pushing the boundaries a bit. You might, if it's too technical, readability will fail. Um, but if your content needs to be technical, then it needs to do that. Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of all the on-page stuff. Um, this is the tool that I use to rank my pages. So this is, good, this is SEO Moz. And for this, what I get to do is I put in uh, the URL and against the, um, the keyword that I want, to, I want to rank it for. And this again, does another check. So it does 27 checks and gives me a score out of 100 about how well optimized that page is. And again, gives me another, another tick list. The reason I use two is that um, Moz measures things slightly different to Yoast. I use the two in tandem um, to see kind of where, where, where it, how it, um, how it pans out for that particular page. I also use Moz for the rank for my ranking checking as well. So Moz basically goes through and checks all my keywords that I put in it and finds out where they are on a month on a week by week basis. Sorry, and, and gives me a report by giving me kind of green ticks up and red ticks down, if anything's moved down. So you can see that over time, um, obviously Marcus not to miss, I should rank number one for that's my brand name, um, but other elements that I rank quite well for, marketing, consulta marketing consultation in leads, we're at number three at the moment, I've dropped two, which is okay. Marketing consultation in Wakefield, we're, we're up on that one, we're at number one spot. Marketing consultant, we're down at the minute at number four. I'm not too worried about movements down, small movements down like that, because next week we could be up at number two or number one again. So you just have to kind of roll with those. This is really useful for when you brought in a new term and you're trying to get that ranking. So new term, once it's been added, you've then got to watch it kind of move, move up, up the, up the tool, up the, um, up the rankings. But this is, this is the way, as you said, Martin, where I, I can measure how well or not a page is doing. Mm. Um, and when you first do a draft, do you find that you get better at that draft based on the feedback, or do you always start off about halfway up? Like there were 27 scores there. What would be a good score to get off your first draft as a bit of a beginner? Um, I think a, 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 good, a good score is, so when you first put your content in and you put in uh, the key phrase that you want, um, that will give you an initial score, and then it adds you to kind of add the tweaky, add the tweaking parts mm -hmm. in it, so the description and the alt text on the images, and then it starts to improve from there. So I'd say a good, a good score, a good score for a first bash is probably about a seventy. If you can get a seventy, you can get um, the uh, the SEO, the Yoast tool, up to say, up, so it just shows orange, and it's those then final tweaks. And this is why sometimes, uh, as, a, as, a, as a marketing agency, when we're presented with copy, we'll sometimes go, okay, so we've got that copy in that a client's provided, but then we may need to do slight amends to that to, make, to, to help that ranking because a client hasn't necessarily written it from a ranking point of view, and that, but that's where we approach it from. Hmm. So we'll, if we write it from scratch, we, we, we write it with a ranking, point, with a, a ranking mindset to get that working. Um, but from a client's point of view, we may well need to amend and adjust to improve that. Mm. And does their algorithm change at all? So it, you'd have to like go back and review it or is it pretty much once done, you can just leave it for a year or two? No, no, no. The algorithm changes a lot. So the algorithm, as I said, Google changed the algorithm probably daily. Nobody really knows. Um, 
and uh, Yoast and SEO mods that we use, they both update their, their scoring tools as, as and when they are sure of what the scoring tools are. So in the background, they're always testing um, what they're saying against the results that Google show to try and get some, some insight. And then once they're sure of what a ranking result will change and what the factors might have been, then they will update their tool. Then they will update their tool. So another good tip is sometimes to go back to old blogs. So if you've got a blog that you've that you wrote a while ago, it's sometimes a really good idea to go back and refresh that yeah. um, and update it because apart from anything else, Google then sees that as fresh content and it likes coming back and indexing new content. So just because it's changed. And so an update effectively or fresh content is effectively the same thing. So if you've gone back to an old blog and gone, actually, I need to rewrite that bit or I've strengthened it by the new images or new bits of paragraphs or whatever else, Google will still see that as new content and re-index it again. So that's why it's really important to continually add new content to your website to improve it. Yeah, nice. Okay, um, we've done kind of half an hour. You got, is there anything you'd like to ask, Martin? No, I want to get my sandwich now because I didn't get one. <laughs> okay, and I, no, no. I noticed you've not eaten yours. So no, I've been talking. <laughs> yeah, so you better get on and I better get my lunch else I'll be feeling a bit weak. <laughs> but thank you for the uh, insight. I knew You're a little welcome. bit of that, but what I did, one of the big things I didn't realise is I only look at the overall store. I don't. And I didn't understand there were contributing elements to it. Yeah. So I wasn't looking, and I, I, I'll go back and have a look at that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting and it changes the way you think about presenting yourself about niche and speciality. And also something I picked up on you were in full flow, and I can't remember what book it was, but there's a good book about spotting opportunities to. Um, enjoy the value of something and you mentioned about emails coming in and conversations so it's about spotting the opportunity the things we have yeah. all the time but it's it's like being aware that the opportunity to capture so my day book here is full of stuff but sometimes it doesn't always get packaged up and turned into something and i think spotting the opportunity is almost as important if not more important than actually writing it down it's actually knowing when there is an opportunity so i'm going to make a little memo to myself to try and recognize when that opportunity arises because i think i've got loads of them it's just yeah, yeah, them. yeah. Some, sometimes content ideas just kind of drop into your lap because you have a conversation with with clients like like yourself and suddenly you go actually i've told martin about that okay so yeah. if, I, if i just finalize that up I can make that a blog post or an extra piece of content yeah. or video or, or whatever. These things are always happening. As I said, um, yeah. if you're looking for good ideas for content, going back to your emails is really good. So if clients have asked you a really long, strange yeah, question really and you've, res you've responded, then that can be taken and make a really good blog post. Yeah, excellent. Loved it. Thank you very much. No worries. Well, thank thanks a lot, Martin. Uh, the next the next one will be in on January the whatever i'll post it up and we'll soon find out but then the next marketing sandwich course is in january nice one take no care have a good Thanks day so bye all. cheers bye. Bye.